So the first thing I was going to do is show you how to do a right to left up and over if you're going to fix the left iliac, left SFA. You can get down to really about uh, the knee. You can go a little bit below the knee, but I'll show you it's a little, little tricky when you get down there. The, uh, what I typically do, and I think the most important thing, is you get your access like normal as you're going up and over. But then use a slightly longer sheath. I typically use a 65 centimeter. What that allows you to do is allows you to go up and over. And when you go over, you have a significant amount of your sheath still hanging out. Now, I'll typically like to secure that. So if you can secure that at the groin, uh, that's ideal, but it leaves you plenty of room to go up and over into the proximal portion of the left uh, common femoral artery to look down, that, uh, look down that left leg. It keeps your sheath down here in kind of the mid-thigh. That's really important to have that at the mid-thigh because now that it's down at the mid-thigh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to open up your lower extremity panel. Again, you want to pull this, uh, pull the, the um, rack toward you and kind of uh, make sure that that's, uh, that's open. And then I typically uh, change into the longitudinal view on my eye, and then you're allowed to go all the way down that left leg. <clears throat> okay, so that's about the level of the knee. Like I say, with that slightly longer sheath, that gives your access point right here. Now, what I'll do is I'll actually place my uh, place my hands so that again, this is this is toward me, and you can go down to the knee level. If you need to go a little bit further, you can. Again, it does allow you to to reach up under underneath the underneath slightly. Again, you kind of adjust your um, your rack so that it uh, so that it covers up all the gaps. You can still see your hands easily, you can see the sheath easily. And then, and again, one of the things that I think is really important is don't forget that you can pan. So if you need to kind of see your sheath, you just pan back. You can see your sheath easily. Again, I would secure it, uh, secure it at, the, uh, at the groin site. That way when you're going in and out, that, uh, that it's, not, it's not pulled out. Um, but that's very important. But again, you can go all the way down, uh, really all the way down the leg. To the knee, it's easy. Once you get uh, really down below the knee, if you're going to do a, a right to left up and over and work below the knee, then uh, it's a little bit of a challenge because of the amount of reach that you have to do to be able to see down there. Uh, so I would say probably at the popliteal level is, is what's ideal for, for an up and over. Uh, if I'm typically just working below the knee on the left side, then I'll go, I'll go any rate. Uh, now, if you, uh, if you go to a pedal approach, and it's uh, really ideal for pedal approach. Let me reset the camera here. So, with your pedal approach, <clears throat> one of probably the most important things that I would say is make sure if you're going to drive your camera, have it below the foot level. Because if you have it too far up, then as you start moving the camera in, it'll tend to, to hit the CMA. So you want, your, you want your controls below the feet, okay? That way when you move in, they don't get in front of you, they don't get in your, they don't get in your way, all right? Access point, ultrasound, uh, ultrasound guided access, right or uh, left people approach. Uh, typically we'll use a, a five French slim sheet that allows you to uh, use any six French delivery system. Uh, again, I would secure that. You can either sew it in or use a tegaderm is what I typically use. Just use a tegaderm on top. That'll hold it in place. Typically, the sheaths are so tight in that little vessel that it's not going to pull out, but I like that extra security of it, of, it, uh, of it staying in place. So once you get your access, then I'll move the camera down. Again, get it into place, and it allows you to to go all the way down, all the way down the knee. Uh, watch the gap between the lower extremity panel and, and your legs. Once you get into position and you know you're going to be uh, treating, say, at the proximal uh, tibia, then this is about where the imaging level of that will be. And so once you get that, you want to close these gaps down. Once you get into position, make sure that the, the rack is toward you. And then you can just work the rest of the time. If you need to slide in or you need to slide out, 
four. Don't forget that this is uh, this can be pulled towards you as well if you need a little bit more room, and then you can move your camera down if you have a if you have a floating uh, if you have a floating II. So you can just move that move that down or move it up. Many times, what I'll do is rather than panning, I'll just uh, I'll just move the camera in and out as I want to go up and down the leg. Uh, but you can do that for the right or left leg. Uh, and then when, you, then when you're done, you can just kind of slide it out. You know, don't keep in mind that you can uh, pan in and out really, really easy. But as long as you keep the, uh, as long as you keep the rack toward you, again, that keeps uh, any, that keeps the scatter from uh, coming up off, off the patient. We know that we get more uh, radiation from these, uh, from these peripherals, so that's a very important thing. So for a uh, for an anti-grade stick, again I do the anti-grade sticks going down the legs uh, without any without any lead on. Uh, what I typically do is pan the patient back, okay, get my access point, and then once I get my access, then if I need to see, I basically just slide the patient in. I leave a little bit of gap here because as you know, sometimes you, you don't get access directly or the wire goes in the profunda and you need to see where you are. So you have plenty of room to see, and so what you'll do is you'll just kind of slide the patient in, see where you are, you still have full access. You can, you can flip the rack toward you, and again, manipulate your wires, whatever you need to manipulate to go down that SFA. Uh, again, I would probably keep the controls far, you know, as far to the right as you can so they don't get in your way as you can, uh, or they don't get too far up underneath you. Okay, once you get access, then your access point is here. You don't really have to have an extra long sheath. I typically just use a straight anti-grade uh, femoral sheath. And then, and then uh, from that, you can fix the legs all the way down. Now, one of the things that you can do is, is what I like to do is because, again, your distance from the radiation is, uh, the amount of radiation gets inverse to square the distance. So uh, rather than moving the patient away and being way back here, uh, I just move the camera down the leg. And so get as far away as I can, lower that gap as much as I can. Typically we'll turn the uh, eye-eye in the longitudinal position so I can see more of the leg. And then I can work, work below. Once you get access and once you get into the position where you're going to work, then again I would lower your, either raise your table or, uh, or lower the lower extremity panel. Best thing to do is probably raise the eye-eye. Raise the table so you get your gap here. Get about one inch. Okay. You bring your rack, soft rack panels toward you. And then, then you've got, then you're in position, uh, then you're in position to work. And this is again, this is some of our longer cases. So you really don't have to change anything at that point. If you want to go up and down the leg, I'll typically just pan with the, uh, with the camera itself, but you also can pan down as well if you, need to, if you need to go back and forth. And you can do that right or left leg. Uh, it's easy access there. So now when we're going a left to right, up and over, again, you turn the patient uh, around. We have them, uh, we flip the patient, have their feet uh, toward the camera. Now for this, to get access, you do need to put on your lid. So I'll put on my, put on my lid apron and my gown. So I put on my lead apron and my gown, and then I get access to the patient here, okay? Again, I use a 65 centimeter sheath, and it's very important to use a, long, a longer sheath. You can go 90 if you want to, uh, if you want a little bit of extra room, but typically the 65 is plenty. So basically, you want to get groin access. You want to go up and over, okay? Once you get up and over to the iliac, you have about this much catheter left over, okay? So once you get that, I typically will secure that at the groin. I'll take, take the end of my catheter, put it toward the head. Okay. Then I'll take off my lead and <clears throat> put on another gown without my lead on. Now I have the excess sheath here. Okay. Again, this is just kind of creating that gentle S. So it's going down, it's going in the, in the left groin, and down the right leg, okay? And my access is here. I can move the patient back. I can image again. Once you kind of get 
you're up and over when you start to work again this is when I raise the table close my gaps make sure this is just about a, an inch pull my rack toward me still have my access point here and then I can go up and down the leg to image the leg. Again, when I try to do this, I will uh, take the camera up and down. Again, as you're going down, and you say you want to work in the in the pedal, you know, in the in one of the tibial vessels, you can go all the way down the leg, and that's moving the radiation away from you. Very important if you can do that. Uh, you can if you want to. Again, you can pan, um, but uh, and still have plenty of room. Still have plenty of room to pan. But again, the further radiation source is away from you, uh, the better. But then you can work uh, all the way down that, all the way down the left leg, or with the right leg without any difficulty. So, and your access point is here. So when you get finished, then uh, <clears throat> then again, you'll just uh, put your wire in. Now, I typically don't put my have to put my lead back on. Uh, you can exchange your sheaths. Uh, again, you can just slide the patient out. Typically, don't do that on the floor. Once you get your wire in, you know where that is then you can just exchange for a short sheath if you want to do that, or do your closure. Uh, you know, step on the other side, do your closure typically again. You're not doing that under fluoro anyway. And then you're, and then you're ready to go. <clears throat> One thing you may want to show, Evans, is, uh, is just this is the way, this is the way it looks. <clears throat> so this is the way the catheter will actually look in the body. So again, your access point is way up here, uh, really at about the elbow level. And so that, that's what allows you to advance this, you know, advance this all the way down. Still have your access, and I usually have my access point right at the level of the, uh, of the lower extremity panel. And that really gives you uh, full access to, the, uh, to that uh, SFA uh, popliteal. And now, uh, if you're imaging, uh, one of your tibial vessels are way down there. If you're going to do an RTP to fix the, say, the left SFA or the right SFA, you can do either really either SFA this way. Uh, the first thing to do is obviously get your access. So once you get your access, it's really easy to watch this go up and over and put your catheter in in the position uh, down the uh, down the right or left leg. Once you do that. It is going to require a little bit of a reach. Um, now, if you if you have extra catheter hanging out, and you don't need all your catheter, and this is where I would suggest using a long, one of the longest catheters, because again, that'll allow it to stick out even here um, below the fingers. If you're if you're up here all the way hugged, then it's going to require a little bit of a reach. Now, here's the thing about the reach: is if you move this panel toward you, okay, and you raise the patient so that you're closing your gaps. Okay, so again, you close the gaps, you pull the rack toward you, you've got a, a great protection here. It's going to require a little bit of reach for your hands just to get up to the wrist. Now, if, you're, if you have a slightly longer sheet where you're down here at the fingertips, then you're working, you're working really right here at the level of the, uh, of the panel, uh, of the lower extremity panel. And that allows you to move down the leg. And again, you know, I can have my fingers on the sheet and you can still get your access to the sheath, and now, now I'm imaging uh, at the knee there. So you can go a little bit further. As you start to go below the knee on either side, you gotta realize you're gonna be doing a little bit more reaching. So again, you need the longest sheet that you can get, and that pulls you back a little bit, pulls you back a little bit further. I would secure it at the wrist, because as you're going back and forth, you don't want, to, you don't want that to slide out. But if you need to go uh, radial pedal, that's, that's obviously a very good access uh, on either pedal or, uh, and, and radial. So if you do R2P and a pedal, then that's, uh, and that's easy. But don't forget, you don't have to work in here all the time. Just pan yourself back out if you need to. Uh, you know, look at your access, make sure it's all okay, uh, and then pan yourself back in. All right, <laughs> once you do that, you again, when you're going back and forth, if, this, uh, if the rack starts moving in, again, it's easy just to flip it back out. So just flip it back out uh, if it starts to roll in and then close your gaps and then you're ready to go.